Hey guys, and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and it's time for a Species Spotlight. Now this week we're going to talk about a plant, and it's one that I've gotten a lot of comments on in my recent rebuild of my 150-gallon Hillstream Aquarium. And the plant we're going to talk about today is Crip Balance. Now you'll often see it called Crispatulata, Var Balance. Um, I'm not really sure that it has a particular common name beyond Balance, but it's a really, really beautiful plant and well worth keeping. In fact, I find it to be quite easy. Now, like many crypts, as you move it around or right after you plant it, it is pretty prone to melt. And the one I have that I purchased definitely went through that. But if you just leave it alone and the roots stay healthy, it generally will grow back. Now, when I moved it from my 55-gallon aquarium into my 150-gallon aquarium, you guys saw that I left it in the pot. And that's because I did not want to disrupt the roots again and have it melt again. And that is a great way to deal with plants like this, but certainly not necessary. Now, because my 150 gallon does not have particularly deep substrate, it's only about an inch deep, I opted to leave it in the pot for that reason as well. The hope is that it will send out runners out of the pot into the rest of the aquarium, as that's how they propagate. Now, this particular plant is not well suited for a small aquarium. As you can see in the 150, they can get up to, I think, about three feet tall, draping across the water surface. In the wild, they actually do come from areas with quite a bit of flow, streams and rivers in Thailand. And you can see that it does really, really well and makes a really beautiful appearance as it curls across that water surface. Because this plant can get so large, on average it does get to at least 24 inches, you would definitely want to place this in the background of your aquarium. Now if you do some research online, you'll see that everyone says that this plant has high calcium needs, and if you don't supply that calcium, it can get deformed leaves, holes in the leaves, as it comes from waters originally in the wild that have a lot of limestone, which means a high calcium content. I personally have never experienced this, but if you were to be working with this plant, that would be probably be where you would start should you start to have issues with it. Now in my application, this aquarium does have medium light, no CO2, no fertilizers, um, and the plant is doing quite well. It is considered an easy plant um, with medium light needs, but I have grown it in lower light, it just stays substantially shorter. For this aquarium, I really wanted that long, tenderly hammered, wavy look, so I was sure to keep it in a good substrate with decent lighting as I was growing it out. I really think that the, the sort of hammered appearance that it gets is really unique and quite beautiful. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments, and let me know if there's other plants you've seen in my fish room that you would like for me to feature in this way. As always, thanks for your continued support.